So, in the last video, we have seen uh, we have seen the Frobenius method, and uh, we have explained, we demonstrated with an example uh, for the first case, uh, where you have the difference between the initial roots of the initial equation are distinct, and the difference is non-integer. So, we'll see another example in which uh, the difference is uh, non-zero uh, but non-integer, but they are complex roots. Okay, so when they are complex roots, if they are real they have to be distinct and the difference is non integer we have seen in the last example and if they are complex that we will see in this example obviously the difference will be imaginary which is not a non integer okay so we'll try to solve solve the equation so x square y double dash minus xy dash plus 10y equal to 0 if you have to solve this uh, okay so, how do we solve this? So, so, where is this? This is actually you have uh, x, uh, x equal to 0 is a singular point. So, you have x positive or x negative. So, if x is negative, you have to work with uh, solutions of the form y x equal to mod x power k sigma n is from 0 to infinity c n x power n. So, you have to look for solutions of this form when x is negative because when x is negative, x power k does not make any sense. Okay? So, you have to write if k because k can be any real number, okay. K k can be k is not an integer, so k can be any number, so any real number uh, or can be complex number. So, so you have to make sense this function. So, it has to you have to take x power, for example, k is half, it has to be root of x. When x is negative, root x does not make sense. You have to write root mod x. So, that is why we look for solutions in this form in this uh, in the x negative case. But anyway, we are working with x positive, so we need not work with this mod x, okay. Otherwise, so just for the completeness, we are giving this, okay. So, first see that x equal to 0 is a singular point. So, you can see that uh, is a singular point, and uh, you consider these limits since this limit x goes to 0, x times x minus x divided by x square this is a naught is x square a 1 is minus x. So, this will go and this becomes minus 1 which is finite and other uh, limit as x goes to 0 multiply x square with this a 2 divided by a 1 is x square. So, this is 10 which is also finite because this is the uh, this is true 0 is 0 is a regular singular regular singular point. So, given an equation you have to check whether 0 is regular singular point or not. Only when it is regular singular point it is of the form as a generalization of Euler Cauchy equation. So, your equation is the generalization of the Euler Cauchy equation. So, you have to look for solutions uh, in the in the solution in the form of solutions of Euler Cauchy the generalization for the solutions of the Euler Cauchy equation that is this Frobenius uh, solutions. Okay. So, you look for solutions look for solutions in the form y of x equal to x power k sigma n is from 0 to infinity c n x power n. So, if I am working with x negative, so you have to take mod x power k. So, that you have to be careful. So, this is the one. So, you you can now differentiate y dash of x and y dash y double dash of x and you substitute if you substitute I directly write this y double dash. Okay. So, you have x square times y double dash will be 0 to infinity n plus k and n plus k minus 1. So, 2 times I am differentiating this I take this inside and then I differentiate term by term. So, you will get c n x power n plus k minus 2 that is your y double dash okay. minus x times sigma n is from 0 to infinity n plus k times c n x power n plus k minus 1. You see because k is arbitrary this index will not be changing throughout. Okay. Then plus 10 sigma n is from 0 to infinity c n x power n plus k equal to 0. See how nice form the equation is so nice n is from 0 to infinity x square you can put it inside. So, that you have n plus k n plus k minus 1 into c n x power n plus k. Here also you have 
n is from 0 to infinity a n plus k c n x power n plus k. So, you take x inside minus 1 goes. So, plus 10 times this is as it is. So, index is same powers are also same in the equation. So, you can simply you can you can simply write uh, what is your initial equation corresponding to always x power uh, n plus so first one n equal to 0. Okay? So, actually because there is no special uh, there is no isolated terms you can put it together as n equal to 0 to infinity n plus k n plus k minus 1 c n is common. So, you have n plus k minus 2. So, you have minus 2 here. So, n plus k n plus k minus 1 minus n plus k. So, n plus k is common n plus k minus 1 minus 1. So, that is what you have okay? and then plus 10 this is the term for C n right? into x power n plus k equal to 0. This is running from, so this is this is what you have. So, this you have a power series which is equal to 0. So, put n equal to 0 that is the initial equation. So, whatever the starting one is initial equation. If you have isolated terms that will also give initial equation. Otherwise, it is if uh, no isolated terms, so everything everywhere index is same. So, you can have you can have the first power first when n equal to 0 first coefficient x coefficient that will be the initial equation. So, you have initial equation is n is 0. So, you have k into k minus 2 plus 10 equal to 0 into c 0 equal to 0. Okay? But we have seen that c 0 cannot be 0. So, you have to look for this with c 0 never be 0. So, that is how we are looking for solution. So, c 0 cannot be 0 implies k into k minus 2 plus 10 equal to 0. So, this will give me k square minus 2 k plus 10 equal to 0. So, you have k as minus b plus or minus square root of b square minus 4 a c. 4 a c is 40 divided by 2. So, that is 1 plus or minus 36 you have. Okay. What is 36? Minus 36. So, you have 3, 6. That means 6 by 2 that is 3. So, these are the roots. Okay. So, k 1. So, because they are complex you cannot say which one is bigger. So, k 1 is you can take anything you want i root 3 i, I 3 3 i and k 2 s i mi 1 minus 3 i. Okay. So, these are the two roots k 1 and k 2. That is what you got when n equal to 1. So, n equal to 1 n equal to 0 n equal to 1 you have you get uh, k plus 1 and uh, k minus 1 n equal to 1. So, you have this plus 10 into c 1 equal to 0. So, this because now what are your k values? This is this k is either 1 plus 3 i or 1 minus 3 i. If you put it here 1 plus 3 i is 2 plus 3 i into into 3 i plus 10 that can never be 0. This cannot be 0 okay, for those k 1 and k 2 values. Okay. That means c 1 has to be 0. n equal to 2 or in, in, in general, in general k equal to 2 and so on. You always see that k plus 2. right? So, n equal to 2 is k plus 2 into k plus 10 into c 2 equal to 0. Again, this is for these two k 1 k 2 values, this will never be 0. So, implies c 2 equal to 0. Similarly, like this you can go on and you see that all c n's are 0 for any n and n equal to k, c k will be 0 okay? for any k 3, 4 and so on. This is what happens. So, what happens? You know put your k, k 1 you will get uh, let k 1 is like earlier k 1 is uh, 1 plus 3 i choose then your y 1 x is you have the form of y x at k equal to 1 plus 3 i. So, what is this 1 plus 3 i? x power k, k is 1 plus 3 i. 1 plus 3 i 
C0 is non zero, C1, C2, 3 are 0. So, you have a constant C0. So, that is one solution. What is the other solution? So, K1, 1 minus 3i. If you choose this, y2 of x is yx when you put k equal to 1 minus 3i. So, again x power 1 minus 3i into c0. In both the cases c1, c2, they are constants, whatever may be. So, it does not depend on k. c1, c2, c all cn's are 0. So, you have these are the two linearly independent solutions. What are these x power complex numbers? It does not make, uh, it is not really clear. So, what you have, what you do is, we have seen already x power i, x power uh, k, any x power k we can write, let us say this is some uh, L, L is this, you want L, okay. So, you consider log L, this will be k log x, assume that x positive, so you can, it makes sense. So, that log when you do, log x makes sense, okay. So, what happens, L is actually now take the e power, this is actually log x power k. So, when you take both sides exponential, L will be e power log x power k. So, that is actually x power k, okay. So, you can write like this in this fashion, okay. So, if you do that, k equal to 1 plus 3 i. So, when L equal to x power 1 plus 3 i, so log L is 1 plus 3 i into log x. Right? So, this is equal to log x plus 3 i. So, log x plus uh, log x power 3 i. Or simply you can have L. L is e power log x into e power 3 i log x. So, what is this one? e power log x into e power i log x cube, right? Log x cube. So, you have seen that L is, and when L is like this, this is same as this form. So, you can see that e power log x into, so this is one solution, okay? When I take minus, you work with minus then you have a minus, so you have a plus or minus, okay, in both the cases. So, these are two linearly independent solutions, that is what we have, right. When you consider C0 equal to 1, both cases, both times, you, you ignore C C naught. So, these are the two linearly independent solutions. So, if, if you see that e power log x into e power i log x cube, both the cases e power minus i log x cube, e power plus i log x cube, both are two linearly independent solutions. So, it is like e power i x and e power minus i x are two linearly independent solutions. What are equivalent to? You can get sum and difference. What is the sum and difference? Cos x and sin x are two linearly independent solutions, okay. That is also you can write, you can rewrite as e power log x, which is anyway common, cos log x cube is one solution e power log x sin log x cube. This is another linear independent solutions. So, either uh, plus or minus you take as a complex solutions. As a real solutions if you write, these are two linearly independent real solutions, okay. So, if you write like this, the general solution of is general solution is as a complex form C 1 times x power 1 plus 3 i plus c 2 times x power 1 minus 3 i. These are complex solutions. It does not make any sense in practice, okay. So, you have to write it as a real solutions or y x real solutions if you write c 1 log e power x. So, log e power x is log x is common, okay. e power log x, e power log x is actually x, right. This is actually x. So, this is x, this is simply x. So, you have x times, x is common anyway. So, x times c 1, x power 3 i is cos, cos log x cube. x power 3 i and x power minus 3 i linear combination, you can rewrite as some new linear combination d 1, okay. 
sum and difference if you can write. So, they are also linearly independent just like here. Okay. So, d 1 plus d 2 sin log x cube. So, these are two linearly independent solutions x cos log x cube and x sin log x cube. So, their linear combination will give you the general solution. So, this is your general solution of as a real solution. So, these are your real solutions. Okay. So, this is your general solution what you are looking for. You can also write like this only problem is this is a complex solution does not make any sense in reality. So, we will see uh, we will demonstrate with an, another example uh, where the initial equation will give you two different roots uh, two different roots, but the difference is integer value. If the integer positive integer value uh, what happens? So, you will be able to get only one solution second solution if you can get it uh, if you actually work out if you actually work out with the general equation you can actually eventually you will see at the end that you will take certain form that form I directly give and work out. Okay. Just have to remember the form in the case 2 and case 3. Okay. Let us work out with the case uh, 2 the difference is non-zero but integer. So, we will try to solve uh, solve uh, this is another example example 3. So, example 3 is uh, solve uh, the equation we solve this x square y double dash plus x into 2 plus x y dash minus 2 y equal to 0. And 0 is in a singular point either 0 or x is less than 0 okay, whichever is the domain. So, if you do this so 0 is a singular point okay. the solution is 0 is a singular point 0 is a regular singular point regular singular point because z x square is 0 at x equal to 0. So, 0 is regular singular point and regular singular because because these two limits are finite x goes to 0 x times a 1 divided by a naught. So, that is 2 plus x divided by x that is going to be 2 which is finite and limit x goes to 0 x square minus 2 divided by x square. So, that will be minus 2 which is also finite. Will be always you choose these two limits. Okay. So, you will always uh, you can directly so once at this step here itself at this step itself you can find uh, initial equation by writing k into k minus 1 uh, plus uh, this first uh, 2k this is your limit first limit 2k minus q naught that is that is the other limit. So, minus 2 equal to 0. So, you can see that k square plus k minus 2 equal to 0. So, what are the roots? So, we will have minus 1 plus or minus square root of b square plus 4 8 divided by 2. So, you have a minus half plus or minus 3 by 2. So, you will get 1 other one is minus 2. So, these are the two roots. Okay. So, you always see k into k minus 1 this is common and this first limit value you put it here into k and second limit value you put plus sub plus second limit value that is the equal to 0 that will be the polynomial equation that will have roots that is one way that is another way of getting directly initial equation. Even after substituting, you get the same thing. You will see that. Okay, so zero is as a regular singular point. So you look for solutions. You look for solutions in the form y of x equal to x power k as usual. Okay, n is from zero to infinity is c n x power n with always c is zero is without loss of generality. C 0 is never be 0. So, substitute into the equation. So, you will get uh, x square y double dash x square y double dash will be I am directly writing n is from 0 to infinity k plus n k plus n plus 1 n minus 1 c n x power n plus k minus 2 and you are multiplying with x square. So, that minus 2 will go plus 2 x Okay, 2x plus x square. So, this we have to be careful. So, you have 2x that means 2x times y dash I write 
n is from 0 to infinity n plus k times uh, c n x power n plus k minus 1 and you multiply with 2 x. So, you have a 2 x minus 1 will go. So, this is what you first term 2 x y dash I wrote then plus x square y dash that is n is from 0 to infinity n plus k c n x power n plus k minus 1. So, if I multiply with x square this becomes plus 2 right plus 1 ok plus 1. So, minus 1 into x square so 2 minus 1 is plus 1. So, this one minus 2 times n is from 0 to infinity c n x power n plus k into 2. So, 2 is there. So, you have this is 0. So, this is what is the equation and so you substitute all the solutions y y dash y double dash into the equations. Now, what happens? So, this is n is running from 0 to infinity all the things except this. This you rewrite. So, if you rewrite change this uh, uh, this this sum you convert this into x power n plus k by replacing n equal to n minus 1 n equal to n minus 1 means n minus 1 equal to 0 means n is from 1 to infinity n minus 1 plus k c n minus 1 that is what it is other other sums you write as it is 2 c n x power n plus k equal to 0 uh, here this side also n is from 0 to infinity n plus k n plus k minus 1 c n x power n plus k plus sigma n is from 0 to infinity 2 times n plus k c n x power n plus k. This is what you have. So, this now everything all powers are same you can uh, sum it together. So, you get n plus k n plus k is common here in both the cases. So, you have n plus k into n plus k into n plus k minus 1 plus 2 into n plus k n plus k is common. So, you have n plus k minus 1 plus 2 so that means plus 1 into c n x power n plus k ok. So, that and then now you add this one here. So, this one plus n minus 1 or n plus k minus 1 into and then ok. So, you have c n c n you put it together. So, you have minus 2 n minus 2. So, this c n ok this c n now what is left is c n minus 1. So, that is n plus k minus 1 c n minus 1 this is with x power n plus k equal to 0 sigma n is from 0 to infinity. So, this is what you have if you actually put c n's together. So, this is what you get with the power. So, now put n equal to 0. So, now this is a power series which is 0 now n equal to 0 coefficient of x power k 0 coefficient of x power k is 0 that is what will give me gives. So, n equal to 0 means coefficient of x power is 0 that you have to make it 0. So, this is a recurrence relation. So, obviously, uh, you have a recurrence relation first you write recurrence relation. So, recurrence relation is n plus k times n plus k minus plus 1 minus 2 c n plus n plus k minus 1 c n minus 1 equal to 0 n is running from 0 1 2 3 onwards because this is a power series which is 0 power series. So, all the coefficients should be 0 that is what is the recurrence relation. So, you have uh, n equal to 0. Now, we look at the n equal to 0 is nothing but x k into k plus 1 minus 2 ok. Uh, n equal to sorry made a mistake. So, this you cannot combine. So, this is this is actually n equal to 0 or isolated here n equal to 1 only common ok and then n equal to 0 parts you write separately n equal to 0 is k into k minus 1 ok into c 0 plus 2 times k and here here minus 2 uh, 2k c 0 and you put uh, uh, ok and uh, here minus 2 c 0 into x power k equal to 0. So, 
this part is 0 separately and this part is 0 separately. So, the n is running from 1 to onwards is the recurrence relation, this is initial equation. So, initial equation is initial equation is simply k into k, because c naught cannot be 0. So, you have k into k minus 1 plus 2 k minus 2 equal to 0. I will give you exactly, this is exactly what you have seen earlier. So, k square minus plus k minus 2. Okay. So, you have a roots, what are the roots? 1 and minus 2. So, the bigger root is 1, k 1 equal to 1, k 2 is minus 2. Okay. So, you are with the case 2. So, by looking at the initial equation, you have a k 1 minus k 2, which is 1, bigger root is 1, minus of minus 2, this is 3, which is non-zero and a positive integer. This is case 2. Okay. This is with case 2. So, we are with the case 2. So, in this case, what happens? The bigger root will always give you a solution. Okay. So, you do not have a problem. You will be able to get all your C n's from this recurrence relation. You will be get all your C n's uh, if you put k equal to k 1. Okay. Put k equal to k 1, bigger root. Get all unknown constants, unknown C n's. I will give you y 1 of x. So, this is the, this is the algorithm. So, you get a y 1, y 1 solution y 1 by putting bigger root. Well, for smaller root in this case, especially in this case, you should look for in a different way. So, let us first get this first solution. What happens when put n equal to 0, when k equal to k 1. So, what is k equal to? Uh, k 1 is 1. So, you have n equal to 0 is 1 plus n equal to 0 means k plus 1. So, that is 2 minus 2 times c 0 plus n equal to 0. So, n equal to 0 is sorry n equal to 1. So, you have to put n equal to 1 sorry n equal to 1 because it is running from n equal to 1 onwards. So, n equal to 1 means k equal to 1. So, you have 2 times n, n equal to 1 k equal to 1. Okay put k equal to 1 that is k 1. So, and then into the into this uh, recurrence relation, if you put this recurrence relation becomes n plus 1 n plus 2 minus 2 n plus 2 minus 2. So, this is what you have into c n plus n because k equal to 1, n c n minus 1 equal to 0. So, this is what is running from n 1, 2, 3 onwards. So, now put n equal to 0 here into this recurrence relation. So, you will get uh, n equal to 0, you get uh, 2 minus 2. So, you have a so, sorry n equal to 1 you know, n equal to 1 you get a 2, 3, 6 minus 2, okay. 4 c 1 plus n is 1 c 0. So, c 0 equal to 0. So, it will give me c 1 is minus c 0 by 4. So, n equal to 2. So, in this case n equal to 2 will give you me 3, 4, 12 minus 2 that is 10 c uh, 2 plus n equal to 2, 2 c 1 equal to 0. So, that will give me c 2 equal to minus c 1 divided by 5 that is plus c 0 divided by 4 5. n equal to 3 you give what is this 3 4 into 5 4 into 5 20 c uh, 20 minus 2. So, that is 18. So, 18 c 3 plus 3 c 2 equal to 0. So, this will give me c 3 is minus c 2 divided by 9. Okay. 6 sorry 6 3 6 is. Okay. So, c 2 is c 3 is minus c 2 by 6 that is equal to minus c 0 by 4 5 6. 
and so on. You can go on getting it for different n values. Now you know what is k, what is your cn. So go and substitute your y1 solution. So first solution is y at x when you put k equal to bigger root which is 1 which is x power k equal to bigger root 1 and the summation n is from 0 to infinity. So I will write this as an expression. So, so you have c0 which I could not find c1 which is c0 by 4 x plus c2 that is c0 by 4 5 the x square minus c0 by that is c3. c3 is minus c0 4 5 6 x cube and so on. So this is what you get. So this is nothing but c1 is common and to you have x minus x square by 4 plus x cube by 4 5 minus x cube by 4 5 6 and so on x power 4. Okay. So this is what is a solution. So you can consider as 1 that will be you take it as 1. So if you take it as 1 this is your first solution. So you can get one non-zero solution always in the case of uh, root, root difference is non-zero but it is an integer. So to get the other solution when it is in integer case you may have trouble. If you simply substitute k equal to minus 2 into the recurrence relation and try to get your c values you may end up getting somewhere you will get by something like 0 by 0 form. You will not be able to find. Okay. If you actually work with the general equation you deal with the 0 by 0 form and finally you end up you will see that 0 by 0 forms wherever you get the 0 by 0 form that is like kind of uh, 0 by 0 form means indefinite uh, form. Okay. That means it can be any number that is like arbitrary constant. So if you work out finally uh, you can see that the second solution okay, let k equal to k2 which is minus 2 the second solution second solution is of the form y2 of x which is equal to I will give you the second form when the root difference is a positive integer. So that is some arbitrary constant a log x because x is positive if x is negative a log mod x you take okay, into y1x. So you write y1 you already calculated y1x into log x, x is positive. If x is negative your is domain log mod x you take plus x power or mod x power if x is negative, x power smaller value k2 that is minus 2. So you it is always of the form. So k2 you have n is from 0 to infinity some dn x power n. So this is the form you should remember. So this is what you get. A second solution is always of this form. Okay, that is uh, a y one x log x plus x power minus two sigma n is from zero to infinity d n x power n. So this is what you will get. This is this is what uh, this is the form you should look. If you look if you look for in this form because I worked with the general equation. And I see that the second solution finally will be in this form. I will be able to get these constants. Okay. That is why I can I know a priori this is the form that works. So if you can remember just to work out problems, okay, and there is so when you look at the initial equation roots and the difference is uh, non-zero but is an integer, positive integer. So this is a case too. You can always get one solution for a bigger root. For smaller solution you can get uh, you can always look for the second solution but in this form if you put it in this form rather than the other earlier uh, solution form if you look for in this form you will be able to get your constants and you see that it will be uh, different from your y1 and it is linearly independent from y1 so that you have two linearly independent solutions okay so you write your solution as y2 y2 in this form so take you look for solutions in this form okay with your y1 is involved some arbitrary constant you have to calculate now a and dn's these are arbitrary constants a and dn's are constants to be found okay so so when the difference of uh, and the roots of initial equation when you consider R1, uh, K1 and K2, when K1 is bigger root and K2 is a smaller root, 
and the difference is uh, non zero but it is, it is an integer we can always uh, find uh, one solution a second solution we should look for in a special form that you can remember so that we will do in the next video so we'll try to find the second linearly independent solution in the next video and uh, write uh, write the general solution in terms of y1 and y2 okay so we'll see that in the next video